Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europe in Naples, back after a bit of lag time to bring you this 2006 Mercedes-Benz SL500 Roadster. Uh, you know, we're settling very nice into the new location. Everything feels quite chipper. Uh, you know, the cars are all out and on display. They're getting up again. But I have to say, there's some terrifying stuff. Did you hear that? That is a rooster. There is a giant rooster, or more than one rooster, and a bunch of chickens uh, up the street, which, you know, they're out there, they're walking around, it's creepy. You know, I feel like I'm living in some sort of, you know, Middle Ages village, you know, with these things walking around. Uh, it's, it's just not something I like, but, um, you know, you can't have it all. Uh, the, the good news is at least they can't fly, or at least I don't think they can. God help me if I find out they can. Anyway, SL500 Roadster. For many, many years, this car has been the official sign of success. Uh, you know, it started in 1955, 54 with the 300 SL Gullwing. Uh, the SL essentially stands for Sport Light, uh, which, uh, you know, I don't know if that's ever really been true. Maybe by 1950s standards, certainly not by today's. Uh, this thing weighs a ton. Uh, this is the R230 model. It followed the R120 birds. Where the hell is that one? I'll keep an eye out. Anyway, it followed the R129, and this is truly where the SL became a Mercedes-Benz supercar. Uh, the performance, the technology, the design, the safety, uh, you name it, has been worked into this thing in such a way as to make it uh, a pretty incredible performer. Uh, the R129 showed some signs of that, but uh, man, did it really take off with this car. Anyway, let's start inside the trunk. Okay, so with the top in the up position, the trunk is pretty big. You do have to move this divider up to get uh, access to your cargo. You can see this one has some sort of accessory rubber mat, very nice. All the netting still in place. Uh, you can fit a set of golf clubs across there, although you're gonna have a hard time putting the top down after that. And uh, otherwise, it does function as a pretty nice trunk. Uh, that said, when the hard top is down, well, we'll get into that. Uh, anyway, everything nice and proper underneath where the top would go. There it goes. Sucks it down like an old uh, Lincoln Town Car. Let's see if we can get the top down. Some of these things have a comfort access type feature where you press and hold the unlock button. Let's see, we'll unlock it first. Probably not. This one probably doesn't have it, so I'll just sit here. I should have checked beforehand. No. Okay. Anyway, so we'll get in, we'll turn the ignition on, and we'll run the hard top back. To do that, you got this big, uh, oh yeah, my phone is going here. We got this big paddle thing here. It's a big switch. You pull it back like this, and just gently give it a little pull. You see it lights up red. Releases from the front. The back panel goes up. And the folding hard top very quickly goes down into place. It's an extremely fast maneuver made to be done at a traffic light. So uh, let's say you're sitting there, you decide the weather's nice, there's no reason to not have the top down. Well, you can do it in a hurry. Down go the windows. Okay, let's have a look at that. Because that is truly what the SL is all about. Now you've got, uh, you know, open top two seat roadstering at its finest. Uh, very, very attractive. It's actually attractive both ways, top up or top down, but top down's the way to go. <clears throat> now this one does have the sport package. You could call it the AMG sport package if you like. Uh, that gives it front and rear bumper treatments, those big five star twin spoke AMG alloys, uh, throatier exhaust and uh, just a general, you know, sportier look all around. It's not mechanical. Uh, it is uh, entirely cosmetic, and that's just fine. It's really nice add-on stuff. Uh, you can see those big xenon headlamps in the ovoid fashion. Uh, big star in the grill with just a few slits. Uh, again, being the sport package, you get that good-looking mesh front air dam. Uh, it's sort of designed to look like a Formula One car wing of the time, and uh, does pull that off pretty well. Uh, very good fog lamps down there. 
Look at those Continentals on those five stars. It's got giant vented dinner plate brakes up front and back, really bring this thing down to a stop. Uh, all this is sort of historical Mercedes-Benz styling, the little slitty vent things there. Uh, you've got uh, mirrors, uh, sorry, you've got signals in the rear view. Uh, love the door handle treatment with the color coded and the titanium look on top. Uh, just all very pretty. And frankly, for a hundred grand, they better be pretty. <clears throat> okay, so now you see the top is stored. Uh, you do get access to your cargo down here, and they give you an easier access point by pressing that red button. Do that, and the top lifts up a little bit. Move the divider. Uh, now you can put all your pate and uh, pumpkin spice lattes and whatever else you need to in the back of this thing with the top down. Replace the divider, press the button, down it goes, all very lovely. So quite a useful two-seat roadster. Uh, you know, if you're shopping for these things, look, look around for stuff like this. You know, these cars, if they haven't been particularly well maintained, these guys are going to be all gone and flipped off, a kind of a weak point in the car. Uh, this thing we got from a Mercedes-Benz dealer where it's a trade-in, uh, you know, they don't keep the older stuff like this. so. Uh, we get to buy it from get the nicest stuff. Uh, still has the factory windscreen installed. You can flip that up when you're driving down the road. That's going to keep the wind noise down. Have a look under the hood. So it's got to be said that this is a fantastic engine from Mercedes-Benz, who does quite unlike BMW, built very good eight cylinders. Uh, this is five liters, 302 horsepower, three valves per cylinder, very, very peppy, torquey engine. Uh, made into a five-speed automatic, it's bulletproof. Uh, you know, these just, they just don't let you down the way that uh, some other cars do. They always stay, you know, they may leak a little oil or, uh, you know, run out of a, you know, stupid sensor of some kind, but there just is no big mechanical repairs on these things. Uh, they're absolutely bulletproof. Uh, you can see this one has a fresh battery there, very, very nice. This thing has two batteries, like an RV. Uh, it's got the starting battery and the house battery for the accessories, so, uh, you know, it is a complicated car. Uh, very nice under the hood for such a complicated car, not too cluttered or wired up, uh, just all very lovely. And frankly, an SL has to be. Nice solid thud the way that closes. Okay, if you press this guy on top of the seat, uh, very nicely the seat rolls forward and tilts forward, and you get access to the back. That gives you your CD changer here and a little slot to keep some weapons on the, on the spy over here. You got a nice set of books, very proper. Lovely little compartments there. Uh, these guys are seat belts for cargo. <clears throat> so let's say you set something down on the package shelf like a Yorkshire Terrier and you're tired of it flying around everywhere. Uh, you just clip that guy into place down there and then your uh, cargo has a uh, seat belt to keep it in place. When you're done, just press that guy, back it goes. All very nice stuff. Now, the fit and finish on an SL is astounding. And again, this is a six-figure car, so it has to be. Uh, you can see the beautiful inlaid wood, the two-tone, uh, you know, the darker taupe with the lighter beige, all very attractive. Uh, you've got these 83-way power seats with heating and memory. Uh, you got a great little place to put your uh, nine millimeter here in the side pocket. Another little place up front for some extra clips or whatever you want to stick in there. Uh, beautiful soft leather seats, the best in the business, very, very supportive, lovely to sit in, uh, a nice mixture of sporty and comfortable. Uh, this one also has the optional wood and leather steering wheel, which looks nice. A uh, little tip though to the Florida guys, uh, if you're going to drive these things in July, that wood wheel heats up to the point where you're going to need asbestos gloves if you leave it outside for a few hours, so uh, bring a little towel to put over them. All right, let's fire it up and go for a spin. All right, the first thing you might notice when I crank this thing up is a very healthy growl. Just the perfect tone. I mean, some guy at Mercedes, some team of engineers spent, you know, weeks, maybe longer, coming up with the perfect startup and exhaust note on this car. 
Sportium. Look at this windshield washer. That's that's just fantastic. I love it when it comes through the shop and comes out with windshield washer down. Oh God, we'll have a little talk about that. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? The engineers came up with this perfect sound. Uh, you know, it, it's menacing, it growls, but it doesn't overwhelm. It's just enough to let you know you got juice under the hood, uh, you know, without, uh, you know, stealing the show altogether. Uh, over here, you got automatic lights, you know, we got phone calls. Oh, for crying out loud. Uh, uh, anyway, you got your automatic headlights, you've got your uh, headlight washer here. Uh, if you want to use it manually, once is parking, uh, twice is on, you pull once for the front fogs, pull twice for the rear fogs. A little warning to guys who like running around with their fog lights on, don't turn on the rear fog, it's dumb. All it does is give you one big brake light on the left side. Uh, here here you have a very nice uh, proper instrument cluster. Kind of unusual weird little pod thing they did. It's not like other Mercedes products, but it does fit the crescent hole with the steering wheel just perfectly. Uh, gives your water temp, your gas. Uh, you know, on some cars, these things are kind of crusty. They're all nice on this one, just 52,000 miles. Uh, you can scroll through all the different uh, stuff that, uh, you know, there's our malfunction for the washer fluid. You know, trip computer, range, nav, radio, so on and so forth. You also have multifunction stuff on the steering wheel. And in the back, I don't know if I can get to it, but you've got uh, flippity paddles kind of hidden behind the spokes of the wheel. So you can manually bang your way through the gears. Uh, over here, you've got Mercedes-Benz Command Unit. Uh, that stands for Cockpit Management and Data. Uh, that gives the driver everything he might need, like Barry Manilow songs or, uh, you know, his uh, navigation to get to the local massage parlor, wherever you happen to be going. Uh, so we've got your radio here, CD, CD changer, uh, MP3, DVD. You also have satellite radio in this one. Uh, you got your navigation with uh, the very nice looking map. Uh, you got these ridiculously over-engineered cup holders that are sure to break at some point in the near future. Got you on this problem. We didn't use them, that's why they're in great shape. No crust or goo in there. Anyway, they work fine. Uh, down here you've got uh, dual side uh, climate control with twin thermostats, his and hers. Uh, you got uh, an ashtray if you want to take up smoking. Uh, great little shifter console here. Uh, ESP, electronic stability program, that's a traction control that works really good. Uh, you've got a comfort and sport setting on this driver adaptive transmission. Uh, what driver adaptive means is this thing's going to learn how you like to drive. So uh, if you tool around like an old lady, it's going to set itself up to shift that way. And uh, if you're running around the place like, um, you know, Michael Schumacher in his heyday, then it's going to get sportier. Uh, and of course, when you click this, you see we're in comfort now. Press that, we go over to sport. Uh, you can also shift manually. So if I move this to the uh, to the left like that, now the D becomes a 1 and the car is going to let you bang it through the gears, which you can either do by moving this left or right. Oh my god, I'm wrong. This is not a 5-speed in this car. It's 7-speed. I got my crap wrong again. Anyway, you can bang it left or right like this, or you can use those paddle shifters up here. Uh, this is part of the airmatic suspension, which will raise or lower the car if you need more ground clearance for every reason. So press it once for a little clearance. You can see vehicle being raised on the ABC. Press it twice and this thing's going to be like Bigfoot or Gravedigger. And look at that. There it is. Look at this thing lifting up. Now you're ready for some mudding. Uh, anyway, what that does, it's nice. If you're on a, you know, really crappy road or, uh, you know, you're finding that when you're backing out of a uh, angled uh, down garage space, you're going to drag the front bumper, then you can get that guy in the up position and give yourself some clearance. Uh, clearance, clearance. You also have your uh, power mirror control. Uh, ABC Sport, which we're going to turn on, you see there it is, active body control, uh, is a fantastic suspension setup that was years in the making. And what that does is replace 
uh, all of the standard kind of struts and roll bars and sway bars uh, with a fluid system that dampens the corners of the car as needed. So if you're taking a really hard uh, you know, right-hand turn, it's going to pump a load of fluid onto the left side, stiffen it up so the car gets no body roll, uh, ditto to the right. And it just it's working all the time, sensing the road, sensing the cornering, and adjusting the uh, suspension accordingly so that you get absolutely the best ride or the sportiest ride. It's a terrific system. Uh, this is uh, underneath the top thing. You can run up a roll bar, which uh, I'm not going to run all the way up because I've got my windscreen deployed, but if you want to do that, you can run that up and drive around looking like uh, you're in a dune buggy or something. Uh, very nice uh, glove box area here with the twin uh, quick access books, the nav thing. This thing's been so well kept. Everything's with it. It's nice. You get this kind of I don't believe it's leather. I'm sure it's faux leather stitching on the dashboard, but it just looks terrific. It's all tight and nice. Uh, you got a self-dimming electrochromatic mirror with your home link, your light controls, you know, everything you need to feel comfy. And then here in the center console, a place, so oh, quaint, a place to put change. Then a second stage where you can just put more 9mm. So, alright, let's go for a spin. You hear that exhaust. You know, there's just something joyous about driving an SL, particularly with the top down. And these late model SLs, you know, which I would say 230 series onward is late, uh, they just give you this incredible performance. You feel like you're really operating a machine. Uh, you know, it's sporty without being Miata-like. It's not light. There's nothing light about it. it. You know, you feel like you're in a really substantial car. Give it a little hammer. Man, and that's what this thing is all about. I see we're in the comfort setting. You know, it's about getting German orthodontists to work at 150 miles an hour on the Autobahn. Oh God, the way it sounds. The feel from the steering. Just absolutely stunning, fantastic car. Uh, so look, if you have an interest in this one, sorry for the wind noise, 2006 Mercedes-Benz SL500 Roadster. Uh, this one is finished in Mars red with uh, stone leather inside, beautiful combo. SLs just look terrific in red. Uh, it's uh, been serviced minus the windshield washer thing. Uh, we'll get to that, what the hell and uh, otherwise just a great piece so uh, anyway if you're out there considering one of these cars give it a good thought they're a terrific bargain right now you know it's a true hundred thousand dollar roadster that you can get for peanuts uh, on the dollar so uh, you uh, you know you really get to benefit from the depreciation uh, anyway thank you very much for having a look we appreciate it we'll see you with the next one take care